guess what? I just got my Ouya in the mail. That means we can play Towerfall. You would love, okay, now come, come get it. Come play Towerfall with me. Come on. Just right there. There you go. All right, you ready? It's right there. Go ahead, hit start. All right. <laughs> you know, maybe you're not very good at this game. <laughs> oh. You know, Towerfall's a really good game. It really does make the Ouya worth the purchase. <laughs> you're not even trying. You're not even trying. You don't even, you won't even eat the piece of ham to play with me. I need a best friend. Video games have always been a social gathering, whether it's during the playing of a game or afterwards when discussing a game with other people. With the internet, it has become easier to play games with other people and discuss gaming online. However, a lot of games seem to create the best relationships in themselves. Whether it is you and another character in the game, or watching characters interact, writing in video games has continued to improve over the years, and here's my top 10 of the best friendships in video games. Number 10. I am sure that almost everybody that has Steam on their computer has played Team Fortress 2, at least once. And while most of the classes in the game have their own way of working together, none work as closely as the Medic and the Heavy. They both go into the front lines together, while the Heavy takes most of the fire, and the Medic heals the Heavy. I wouldn't have even included these two war buddies, but Valve's Meet the Medic cemented my opinion of these two as true best friends forever. Number 9. Final Fantasy X is some people's favorite and least favorite Final Fantasy game. I could totally understand both sides, but personally, it is my favorite. And while I can't admit there are quite a few rough spots, ultimately, it was a great game, with a pretty interesting story, and I can't wait to play it again in HD when it gets re-released later this year. Although a lot of characters can be pretty flat, the relationship most interesting to me was not Yuna and Titus by any means, but Waka and Titus, two men separated by thousands of years but connected for their love of Blitzball. The fact that Waka gives Titus his brother's sword and constantly refers to Titus reminding him of his brother shows a deeper connection. Waka always comes to Titus's defense and tries his best to explain the strange new world to Titus. Number 8. Bethesda has always put a lot of care into the Elder Scrolls series and Fallout. One of the main things they tend to include is a varied range of characters that you are expected to help. Sometimes when you help these people, they will follow you on your journey. My favorite assistant was in Fallout 3, an original occupant of Vault 87 where some of the worst radiation hit. Fox was locked away in the vault and his super mutant brothers were too stupid to figure out how to get him out. He spent his time reading about history and relearning the English language. Upon your character's arrival in Vault 87, you can choose to free Fox and he will follow you through the entire game. His gung-ho attitude, complete with a Gatling laser, makes him essential to have in the Capital Wasteland. The final impressive feat of Fox is that at the end of the game, SPOILER, the player can have Fox enter the final code, since he can withstand the radiation, whereas the player would die from it. Number 7. If you have seen my top 10 Zelda video, you know the Majora's Mask is my absolute favorite Zelda game. It is easily one of my favorite games of all time. This has a lot to do with the simple fact that it is almost completely character driven. This game has the most emotion, and it felt like the stakes were the highest they had ever been or would ever be for our hero Link. The main threat to Termina is a Skull Child who has been possessed by a legendary mask. Before this, however, the Skull Kid was best friends with two fairies, and they all kept each other warm in the rain. Aww, the feels. It could be assumed that these three got along so well because they were outcasts. Notice there are no other Skull Kids in Termina, nor are there fairies. However, the relationship we see is true. They run and play together, and even deface public property together. Tattle and Tail just want their friend back, and they defend the Skull Kids character. Number 6. Mega Man is a popular series that has gone through many transformations, spin-offs, and reboots. <laughs> Get it? It's a computer joke. One of the only positives of the lack of Mega Man love from Capcom is that we as players have plenty of games to catch up on. Mega Man Battle Network was an interesting direction for the Blue Bomber, but it was also a pretty effective social commentary and drew parallels to our obsession with social networking. The relationship between Mega Man and Lan is similar to that of Ash and Pikachu from Pokemon. Mega Man is Lan's pet, or personal terminal. What makes this relationship interesting is common in a lot of Japanese games, in the fact that Lan's father is never around and he seems to have a lot of trouble making real friends. However, with Mega Man as his pet, he is capable of doing amazing things, like saving the world. Number 5. 
Dark Souls is easily one of the best games this generation, between its rewarding gameplay and difficulty. The wonderfully dark atmosphere in the bleak and desolate Lardrin makes for a pretty depressing game. You have very few friends in the game, but many enemies. However, after defeating the Tauros Demon on the outlook of the Undead Burg, a man is staring out at the sun. It's Solaire! And while at first all he gives you is an orange soapstone, he then assists you with the bell gargoyles. He shows up many other times to help, and even in An Orlando, he seems to be interested in becoming more than friends. What really cements Solaire's position on the list is that if you save him from the Chaos Bug, which, if you don't, leads to his tragic demise, he can be summoned for the final fight against Lord Gwyn. Number 4. This one felt pretty obvious given the name and the cover art of the game. Jack and Daxter was Naughty Dog's next venture after the insanely popular Crash Bandicoot series. It had a slicker look and more mature themes. In my opinion, Jack and Daxter is the finest work Naughty Dog has done, and I wish they would return to doing games like it. The friendship between Jack and Daxter was pretty simple, they were best buddies. But when Jack accidentally turns Daxter into an Otzel, they must find a way to reverse the spell. Daxter does most of the talking, as he is the loudmouth, but they always seem to have each other's back. If you have missed playing this great series, there is an HD collection now available. Number 3 while some people hate the three hour long tutorial in Kingdom Hearts 2 where you play as Roxas in the strange world of Twilight Town, you start to find out that things aren't quite what they seem, and specifically, the red haired man, Axel, is trying to get Roxas to remember him, implying that they were great friends at one time. This is pretty painful to watch as Axel is a nobody, someone incapable of feeling, but he seems to feel real friendship through Roxas, who is fading away. This relationship didn't mean too much in Kingdom Hearts 2. But when Kingdom Hearts 358 over two days was released on the Nintendo DS, it helped us show what Roxas and Axel went through together as members of Organization 13. Number 2 One of the first games I ever started to notice the importance of humor and dialogue was Banjo-Kazooie and its sequel Banjo-Tooie. I'd never played a game that actually made me laugh and caused me to be invested in the characters. On one end we have the quiet conservative bear, Banjo, who just wants to save his sister. On the other hand, we have Kazooie, a loudmouth bird who continuously breaks the fourth wall. They even each other out nicely and have a very enjoyable banter, but in the end, they were great as one of gaming's finest duos. Number one. After Super Mario 1 through 3, we were all waiting for the next big thing to arrive, specifically on the newly released Super Nintendo. When Super Mario World was released, it took the world by storm. Some people, myself included, still consider it to be the best Mario platformer ever made. Level design and power-ups aside, one of the things that really put the game over the top was the inclusion of a green dinosaur named Yoshi, who would help you through the game despite the occasional sacrifice of Yoshi to make jumps. But that's what friends are for? In the sequel to the Smash hit, the roles are changed as Yoshi is trying to help deliver baby Mario to safety in Yoshi's Island. Guys, thank you all so much for watching this video. Uh, I'm really trying hard to buckle down and do top 10s and reviews from now on, so I figured this would be a nice short top 10, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. And feel free to give me your opinions down below. Did I forget somebody? Did I include somebody you don't like? Please feel free to give all your opinions, but keep in mind I haven't played every single video game that's ever existed. We might not have the same opinion. But guys, thanks so much for watching. If you have any suggestions on what you want to see next, please feel free to comment below. I'm Red Panda Gamer. Like this video, favor this video, comments to you, subscribe. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, share this video with your friends, uh, because that's what the whole video is about. Best friends! And I think you guys are all my best friends. Be sure to check out previous videos like my Game & Waro review, or my top 10 Pokemon games, or top 10 indie games of last year. I don't know. Hotline Miami's on there. So check it out, and thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.